In September 1991, a new chapter unfolded for the Russian Navy as a sophisticated aircraft landed vertically on the aircraft carrier Admiral Groskov. Designed by the Yakilev Design Bureau, this aircraft aimed to revive the former Soviet Union's glory in naval aviation. This ambitious effort, known as the Yak-141, embarked on a journey to regain the prominence of the Soviet Navy, achieving impressive world records from prototype to completion. Although initially promising, the Yak-141 faced challenges that were difficult to overcome, ultimately influencing the design of the Lockheed F-35. It is important to acknowledge that the Soviet Navy posed a formidable challenge to the United States, with a specific focus on countering U.S. aircraft carrier groups and delivering nuclear payloads through submarines from distant polar regions. The Yak-38 served as the primary naval aircraft, operating on the Kiev-class aircraft carrier, but was always considered a temporary solution. In the early 1980s, the Yakilev Design Bureau received a crucial task to develop an aircraft capable of defending the fleet against enemy aircraft attacks, surpassing the capabilities of the formidable F-14 Tomcat and F-18. The stakes were high. This new fighter aircraft had to be capable of vertical takeoff and supersonic flight. This marked the beginning of the Yak-141. Before we proceed, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss updates on military videos and other interesting technological developments. The journey to create the Yak-141 was evidence of engineering prowess. The design featured a unique engine, the Soyuz R-79B-300, equipped with thrust vectoring nozzles. This engine, along with two lift engines, RD-41, enabled vertical takeoff and supersonic flight, achieving significant engineering challenges. However, the path to success was fraught with obstacles. Initially funded for four prototypes, the project experienced delays and uncertainty after the death of Defense Minister Ustinov in 1984 and Yakilev's retirement. The maiden flight of the Yak-141 took place in 1987, and in 1991, the aircraft successfully took off and landed on the aircraft carrier deck. Despite achieving this feat, the victory of the Yak-141 was overshadowed by the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Economic turmoil halted many military projects, but the Yakilev Design Bureau continued testing the last two prototypes with their own resources. Funding constraints eventually brought the project to an end, leaving the Yak-141 as an intriguing but unrealized dream. With 12 world records during flight testing, the Yak-141 remained a secret, dubbed as the Yak-141 to conceal its identity. This secrecy persisted until Lockheed entered the scene, providing additional funding and forming an unexpected partnership. The Yak-141 made its public debut in 1992 at the Farnborough Air Show and was showcased for the last time at the Moscow Air Show in 1993. Both prototypes are now in museums, symbolizing the unrealized potential of this extraordinary naval aircraft. Surprisingly, Lockheed, the American aerospace giant, found value in Yakilev's innovation. The legacy of the Yak-141 lives on through its solutions 
used by Lockheed in the development of the X-35 and subsequently the F-35, marking an interesting chapter in aviation history. As we reflect on the journey of the Yak-141, it serves as evidence of the resilience and innovation of aviation engineers. Although the Yak-141 did not enter mass production, its impact resonates through the corridors of history, influencing the paths of modern naval aviation. If you have interesting ideas about military topics to discuss, feel free to write them in the comments section below, and we will promptly address them. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss updates on military videos and other interesting technological developments.